I'm Brittany, this is Wei Ying, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things. And in this instance, we read them. Happy 2024, you guys! Holy crap, we are back! We are back and we are starting a new series today. As we should. There are currently three trilogy- three trilogies. Wow. There are currently th currently three seasons. This is a great way to start off the year. There are currently three series by MXTX. I have now experienced two of them. And today we start with the third, which is ironically the first one she ever wrote. This is Save System. I'm neurotic. And um, that first word and the actual title there, I don't like saying. It's, it's not that the word is particularly disgusting. I don't have a problem with like nasty words, but saying certain sounds doesn't it like I do my best to power through them when I'm actually reading. But when it comes to something like titles where I can kind of cop out and just say save system, I do. So if you didn't know that I was neurotic before this, you do now. So I will be referring to this as save system. We get to start this today. I have no idea what happens at all, period. I know it's pretty wild. I know there's something about gaming in here somewhere and like gaming reality versus what have you. That's the extent of my knowledge. I don't know anything. This is not an audiobook experience. I am not reading you something that I have already read and therefore prepared. This is completely by the seat of my pants. I am reacting as I am reading. That would be the entire point. We usually get through about 40 to 50 pages in a two hour sitting. And according to that, then we should actually get through this first volume pretty quickly, especially since Happy New Year, the frequency of these reading live streams has increased. We used to do it twice a week, reading live streams this year three times a week. They will be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing. But of course, if you have notifications enabled, if you're subscribed, then you will obviously be notified whenever a stream like this is about to happen. I'm going to do my best to make sure that the live stream is set up the night before so people have plenty of time to see what is about to happen on this channel. So let's see, am I forgetting anything? In the spirit of 2024, I have actually decided to try to help out my ADD brain and like keep lists of things nearby to help myself out. So let's see. Ah, I did almost forget something. Um, YouTube has decided to do ads a little bit differently with live streams. You can now, when you enable ads, you can now choose when you drop into them if you would want to, or you can have YouTube do it for you. I hate both of those options because I hate mid-roll ads. Hi, I'm Brittany. If you've never been on this channel before because it's a brand new series and you're wondering what the fuck is going on, my name is Brittany. I hate mid-roll ads. The most you should be seeing is an ad at the beginning, like when you open the stream or what have you. I hate mid-roll ads. I would never do that to you. I'm pretty sure that I have settings enabled to where you won't see any because it should be up to me as to whether or not you see any and I'm never going to hit that button. So if you see any mid-roll ads, please do let me know because then I will just turn off monetization for live streams altogether. I am very fortunate in that I have a Patreon, so I am not even remotely dependent on YouTube for the ad revenue money, right? I am barely paid from YouTube as it is. So if I have to turn off monetization for the live streams, I will do it. Just let me know if for whatever reason they force mid-roll ads on you. I hate that shit. I would never do that. Mid-roll ads suck. So just so you're aware. Alrighty, we are starting on page motherfucking one. As per usual, the cover art is beautiful. I think... I think actually every volume of this series was gifted to me. Maybe I bought volume one, but I don't think so. I think this is one of the series where it is entirely thanks to some specific patrons that I have all four volumes of this. 
which helps me out greatly. Um, I actually have, you can't see it, but I have a whole shelf now dedicated to, uh, like, all Danme stuff. And most of it was gifted to me. Which is a little unreal. Um, I will talk about that more in the Gay Watch in 2024 video that is coming soon. Why can I not get to page one? What is this? Okay. <laughs> Chapter one is literally called the word that I don't like saying. <coughs> That's the vibe. That's the vibe for this one. All right. Sure. I hear this is a wild ride. I hear it's pretty funny. I hear that I'm not ready. And all those, all those three things I am down for. So let's wait. Okay. I've got my bookmark candy. I have done all the announcements that I needed to do. Yes, I did. Well then. Let us go into save system. Holy shit. Okay. Well, actually, let me get my face out of the way here. New year. Who this? All right. My, fi my face completely out of the way, but I can still keep an eye on the stream. All right. Here we go. Proud Immortal Demon Way was a male power fantasy of a stallion novel. It okay. Okay. All right. That's an opening sentence. To be more specific, Proud Immortal Demon Way was a monster-fighting escapist cultivation novel with an incomparably ridiculous length, a golden finger that broke every rule, and a harem size nearing three digits, seeing as every single female character fell for the protagonist. This year's hottest stallion novel. There was no other. The male lead of this novel, oh god, yeah, by the way, this is going to be a whole new slew of names and a whole new learning curve for my mouth and linguistic skills or lack thereof. So just bear with me, please. The male lead of this novel, Luo Bingha, 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 I might want to actually, huh, see if I was a better YouTuber, I would have looked at the pronunciation guide before now. Did I remember to do that? No. Hang on. Let me write that down real quick. Nice big letters pronunciation. That's literally what it's there for. Fantastic start. Was neither the kind who started heroic and invincible like a proud dragon of the heavens, nor the kind who was a loser, a good-for-nothing without merit. Yet he managed to trend with tens of thousands of readers on Jongdian literature, inspiring countless other male fantasy novels to follow in his footsteps. He was the kind of lead who was pitch black, dark, and vicious. Though before his heart blackened, he was the kind who suffered misery after misery. Next, let a veteran reader of this novel, Shen Yuan, omit the countless fan servicey details and concisely summarize the million word epic for everyone. That's longer than um, Heaven Official's Blessing. Immediately after birth, Luo Binga hmm, was abandoned by his parents, swaddled in white cloth, and put in a wooden basin that was lowered into the Luo. Luo River. This occurred on the coldest days of the year, and it was only thanks to fishermen pulling him out of the water that he didn't freeze to death as a baby. Because he'd been drifting along the Luo in the season when it was choked with thin ice, he was given the name Luo Binga. Luo Binga spent his, spent his early years wandering the streets. Ah, Luo, thank you. Hungry and cold, a dreary childhood. A washerwoman who worked for a wealthy family took pity on him, and since he had no children of her own, since she had no children of her own, she adopted and raised him as her own. Mother and son were poor, and they suffered much humiliation at the hands of their rich patrons. Growing up in such an unhealthy environment became the foundation of Luo Binga's future twisted personality, 
post-darkening. His inclinations to fight over every scrap, seek revenge for the smallest grievance, and hide murderous intent behind a smile. What kind of person <laughs> does it make me that I literally read that sentence because that's all one sentence. I literally read that sentence and finished it and my brain immediately went hot. That's a trick question. It actually doesn't say anything about me because we're free to like what we like in literature, but every now and then it tickles me. The type of things I read in fiction and just go, yeah. Once, he withstood the beatings of the family's young masters for a bowl of lukewarm meat congee. In the end, he was still too late, and he failed to give his adopted mother even a single taste before she died. By complete coincidence, he was selected for training by one of the cultivation world's four great sects. Oh god, here we go. Oh god, I can never remember when C is pronounced with a T-S. I'm trying to remember. C, no, I think it's just a C. C is in Kang or C is in Sang? Sang? Thank you. Sang Chung Mountain. There he apprenticed under Shu Ya Sword, Shen Ching Chu. Luo Bing thought he could finally start down the righteous path. He couldn't have expected that Shen Ching Chu was fair without, was fair without, but foul within, trash. Of the lowest caliber. Shen Qingchu was jealous of Luo Binga's unparalleled and, and exceptional talent, and he secretly feared his disciple, whose cultivation improved by leaps and bounds every day. He always found new ways to taunt and demean Luo Binga, even enlisting the boy's peers to belittle him. Throughout these years of studying, Luo Binga endured every humiliation. It was another heart-wrenching arc in his story, filled with blood and tears. After much difficulty, Luo Binga managed to turn 17, at which point he finally participated in the event the cultivation world held once every four years, the Immortal Alliance Conference. However, at the conference, Luo Binga fell victim to Shen Qingqiu's scheming and he tumbled into a crack in the boundary between the human and demon realms, the endless abyss. That's right, only then did the story truly begin. Not only did Luo Binga survive, sorry, the crack between human and demon realms, the, en the endless abyss is just giving me, um, you know, Wei Wuxian vibes. Not only did Luo Binga survive, but within the Endless Abyss, he found his personal sword, the peerless mystical blade, Shin Mo. He also learned the truth of his origins. As it turned out, Luo Binga had been born to the demon realm's saintly ruler and a woman of the human realm. Within his veins flowed the blood of the ancient, heaven-fallen demons, as well as that of the human race. His birth father, Tianlong Jun, had been sealed beneath a great mountain, trapped for all eternity. His birth mother had been a disciple from a righteous cultivation sect, but shortly following Tianlong Jun's sealing, she had been expelled on suspicion of having secret ties to demons. She had died from a postpartum hemorrhage after giving birth to Luo Binga, but prior to her death, she had set her son adrift from the lonely ship she'd birthed him on. It was the only way she had been able to give Luo Binga a chance to survive. Luo Binga and Shin Mo, Lo, <laughs> Luo Binga used Shin Mo to release his body's seal on his demonic blood. Then, within the dark abyss, he single-mindedly cultivated and enlightened himself to otherworldly techniques before heading back to Sang Chong Mountain Sect. From there on out, Luo Binga steadily handed down his dark path, never looking back. Every single one of his old enemies suffered great torment and died a horrible death by his hand. I cannot believe the Wei Wuxian vibes. I love this so much. One of the reasons I've been so excited to read this is because is just to see where MXTX started because I love seeing an author's evolution and this is not disappointing. 
Every single one of his old enemies suffered great torment and died a horrible death by his hand. With his steadily improving ability to lie and scheme, Luo Binga won the trust of many people, feigning compliance while secretly plotting against them. He seized power and rose in position, beginning a reign of terror. As the story unfolded, Luo Binga's heart blackened further and further. He returned to the demon realm and inherited the position of saintly ruler, yet unsatisfied. He began to eradicate each one of the human realm's great righteous sects, bathing them in blood, annihilating all who opposed him. In the end, Luo Binga became a legend spoken of for generations of immortals and demons, hailed for his unification of the three realms, the uncountable size of his harem, and his boundless number of descendants. <laughs> dumb fuck author, dumb fuck novel, with his dying breath, Shen Yuan spat this final curse. Who could have imagined that an upstanding young man like him, who had properly purchased the website's VIP currency and read the novel's official version, would find himself persevering before his untimely death to finish a novel so stallion, so many grubbing, and overly padded that it left him speechless with rage? How could he not curse? This is one of those things that's so funny you can't even laugh. Proud Immortal Demon Way by Airplane Shooting Towards the Sky. Just looking at that euphemistic handle smacked you in the face with a dirty feeling. Grade school level writing with landmines everywhere, breaking all suspension of disbelief. And Shen Yuan couldn't bear to call that incoherent mess of a world the author had built a cultivation setting. Oh shit! <laughs> What kind of cultivation world had people using horses and carriages all day? What kind of cultivation world had people who, after achieving an... Ooh, it's Anedia or Anedia? I'm gonna half guess Anedia? Still needed to eat and sleep. What kind of cultivation world had an author who occasionally mixed up even the stages of foundation establishment and nascent soul? When faced with the protagonist, every single character acted like his total edgelord aura had devoured their intelligence, especially Luo Binga's master, Shen Ching Chu, that idiot among idiots, scum among scum. His only purpose was to dig his own grave, and he hadn't even managed to finish before he was killed by the protagonist instead. So why had Shen Yuan started this book, even going so far as to read it to the very end? Don't misunderstand, Shen Yuan didn't enjoy degrading himself. The reason he had persisted was also what had caused him the most frustration. This novel had an incredible amount of foreshadowing, plot lines everywhere, mystery after mystery, layer upon layer of red herrings, and at the very end, not a single one paid off. It was enough to make him want to puke a fountain of blood. Boy, if I don't relate! Why were priceless herbs, spirit elixirs, and peerless beauties everywhere like they didn't cost a cent? Why were the villain's speeches and poses as they dug their graves and got offed all exactly the same? The dozens of maidens barely glimpsed, all of whom agreed to enter the harem. What happened to them? All right, skipping past that last one for a moment, who had been the culprit behind the scores of atrocities? Exactly what was the purpose of the unending list of characters so hyped for being awesome and without equal? Why did none of them make an appearance, even at the very end? Towards the sky bro, airplane, airplane bro, great master. Can we have a discussion? Fill in plot holes, okay? Shen Yuan felt like he could have come back to life with the power of sheer rage. In the endless darkness, a mechanical voice sounded by his ear. Activation code, dumb fuck author, dumb fuck novel. System automatically triggered. The tone reminded him of Google Translate. Who is this? Shen Yuan looked around. It seemed like he was floating in a virtual space, one so dark that he couldn't see his hand before him. The voice came from all directions. Welcome to the system. I'm going to have to figure out a voice for this, aren't I? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the system. This system operates in line with the design concept. You can you up, no can, no, oh, I don't know if it's, do you pronounce it BB or do you, or do you just say baby? Because I usually just say baby when it's just BB. 
maybe kind of, mm-hmm, yeah. And this comes with a footnote. <sighs> this comes with a fucking footnote. Uh, the, uh, a common Chinese meme. This is a deliberately and entertainingly bad translation of the phrase, basically, if you're capable, then you do it. If you're not, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> ah, that, re- that really reminds me of, um, the bad translation thing reminds me of all our ba- all your base are belong to us. Hilarious. We hope to provide you with the best possible experience. It is our sincere wish that during your time, you can fulfill your desires and, in accordance with your wish, transform a stupid work into a magnificent, high-quality, first-rate classic. We hope you enjoy. What? What do you mean? In accordance with your wish, transform a stupid work. Okay. Okay. In the midst of his ensuing vertigo, a man's voice asked lightly beside him, Shidi, Shidi, can you hear me? Shen Yuan shuddered and settled his mind, forcibly peeling open his eyes. The scene that appeared before him was a massive, whirling flurry. It took a while for everything to finally coalesce and slowly become clear. He lay on a bed. Looking up, a white gauzy canopy hung overhead, with finely crafted perfume patches dangling from the four corners. Looking down, he wore a white robe of an ancient style. Next to the pillow lay a paper fan. Looking to his left, a handsome, elegant young man, dressed in Shuandron formal robes, sat by his bedside, looking at him with concern. Shen Yuan closed his eyes, then sharply reached for that foaming fan and opened it with a snap. He lightly waved it, fanning away the cold sweat pouring down his face. The man's eyes lit up with joy. Shidi finally woke up, he said warmly. Do you have any discomfort? Nothing too bad, Chen Yuan said with some reservation. The information overload was a bit much. He dazedly tried to sit up. As he did, the man quickly reached out to support his back, letting him lean against the headboard. Having read many of Zhang Dian's transmigration novels, Shen Yuan had long ago resolved that if he one day woke up to find himself lying in a strange place, strange place, the first words out of his mouth before he understood what was happening definitely wouldn't be a carefree giggle and, are you filming a movie? The props look so real. Your crew's really giving it their all, i.e. the words of a person slow-wittedly trying to find their footing. Rather, Shen Yuan concentrated on acting like he'd just woken up, expression absent-minded. I... where is this? The man startled. Did you sleep yourself into a trance? This is your Qingjing Pink. Peak. Of the three words in that title, peak is the one I get caught on. Internally, Shen Yuan was shocked, but he continued to act muddled. Why... why was I asleep for so long? Oh, art. Art. Uh, and actually, art I can show you now. Hang on. Oh, look at the lovely art. First art of the series! Ah! I love that there's a readout right there. He did describe that, though. Sorry, I'm getting... Whew. Hit the mic. Oh, can't see my face. Hang on, I gotta get that back to normal. Thank you. That's what I wanted to ask you. You were in perfect health, so how did you suddenly come down with a high fever? I know that with the Immortal Alliance Conference approaching, you've been training your disciples and are anxious to see results, but with Sang Chung Mountain being such a well-established and renowned sect, even if one of your own didn't attend this time, no one would dare question us. Why concern yourself with empty words? The more Shen Yuan listened, the more something felt off. Why did these lines sound so familiar? No, why did this setup seem so familiar? The man's next sentence, single and earnest, confirmed all his suspicions. Ching Chu Shidi, are you listening to Shishiang? At this moment, something dinged, and the mechanical Google Translate-like voice from his dreamscape spoke again. I've actually never heard Google Translate... No, wait, yes, I have. I've used Google Translate, and so obviously I've, I've heard it speak, but I've never heard it speak more than one word at a time for like my translation purposes, um, which is usually like trying to come up with 
good fantasy words for like locations and names and bullshit. So now I need to actually go through and listen to Google Google Translate's voice when it's trying to pronounce like actual phrases and sentences. But until then, the system was successfully activated. Bound roll. Luo Binga's master, Sangchung Mountain Sex Sex Peak Lord of Qingjing Peak, Shen Qing Chu. Weapon, the sword Shu Ya. Starting B points, 100. Fuck, 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 what bullshit is this? How come you're speaking directly into my brain? Does airplane shooting towards the sky know you're plagiarizing proud immortal demon way setting like this? Of course, Shen Yuan didn't say this out loud, but the voice swiftly responded. You have triggered the system's execution command and have been bound to the Shen Qing Chu account. As the plot progresses, various point types will gradually become available. Please ensure that no score falls below zero, or the system will automatically mete out punishment. Stop. Enough. Shen Yuan was sure now. He'd hit the jackpot. He'd transmigrated. Transmigrated into a story he'd just finished, moreover. Even if it was a pitch black stallion novel he hated, and even if it came with some kind of shitty system. As a 21st century veteran VIP reader of Zhang Dian literature, Shen Yuan had read various types of do-over and transmigration male power fantasy novels year in and year out, so theoretically, he could have happily and easily accepted this fact. But of all people, the shell he was borrowing just happened to belong to the male lead scum villain master, Shen Qing Chu. This, um, made the situation rather complicated. The amicable-looking elder brother type beside him was Sangcheng Mountain Sect's current sect leader, Shen Qingchu Shixiang, the Xuanzu the Xuanzu Sword, Yue Qingyuan. Fuck. There was a very important reason Shen Yuan emphatically thought fuck at the sight of Yue, Xing, Yue Qingyuan. In the original work, Yue Qingyuan's death had been caused by his good Shidi, Shen Qingchu. Okay. <sighs> And what a horrific death it was. Tens of thousands of arrows had pierced him until not even his bones remained. Are you catching all this? At this moment, the victim was facing his own murderer and showering him with concern. The pressure was immense. On second glance, though, the story hadn't yet unfolded to that point. Yue Qingyuan was still in perfect health, meaning that at this point in time, Shen Qingchu had yet to reveal himself as a hypocrite, and his reputation <coughs> and his reputation was still pristine. Yue Qingyuan was a bleeding heart, nothing to be afraid of. Hmm. Though his character ended up suffering quite a bit, during his read, Shen Yuan had been rather fond of him. He was just about to relax when a string of words floated eerily to the forefront of his mind. Ooh. Oh, nice. Like a legit section from Proud Immortal Demon Way. Okay, hang on. Within the dark, gloomy room, a metal chain chain hung from the beam. At the end of the chain dangled a ring. The ring was fastened around a person's waist, if it could still be considered a person. This person's appearance was filthy and disheveled, like that of a madman. The most frightening thing about him was that all four of his limbs had been severed. His shoulders and thighs were only four bare knobs of flesh. When touched, he would let out a hoarse, ah, sound. His tongue had been torn out, too, rendering him unable to form complete words. Proud Immortal Demon Way, a selected passage on Shen Qing Chu's fate. Shen Yuan, ah, no, Shen Qing Chu, rested his forehead on his hand. He was in no position to lament the horrors of other people's deaths. The most horrific death was his own, okay? Henceforth, he had to avoid any critical errors. First, eliminate any mistake at the root. Second, from now on, cling madly to the male lead's thighs. Third, be a good mentor and helpful friend who is earnest and gentle in his teachings, meticulously show the male lead every kind of concern. 
The moment Chen Ching Chu had these thoughts, a long string of alarms erupted in his mind, as if 100 police cars carrying 100 shrieking divine beasts were zooming past. It was so cacophonous that he shuddered, clutching his head in pain. Shidi, does your head still hurt? Yue Qingyuan asked worriedly. Teeth clenched. Shen Ching Chu didn't answer. Warning, the system shrilly notified him. This proposed plan is incredibly dangerous and qualifies as a violation. Please do not attempt, or the system will automatically mete out punishment. How is that a violation? Currently, you are at the beginner level, and the OOC feature is frozen. <laughs> Lines of dialogue! <laughs> You must complete a beginner-level quest to unfreeze it. Before unfreezing, any act in violation of the original Shen Ching Chu character settings will result in a in, in a, sorry ooh this will result in a deduction of a fixed number of B points. That's bad. That's not good. I would ooh I would complete the beginner-level quest. You know, as a semi. Semi, as a semi-otaku. Shen Ching Chu had seen a number of fan work-related terms here and there. You know what I mean. So of course he knew the definition of OOC. Adjective, acronym for out of character, defined as breaking character or acting in a way inconsistent with the character's canonical personality. In other words, before that whatever feature gets unfrozen, my behavior and actions can't differ from what Shen Ching Chu would do. Correct. This system had already let him transmigrate into Shen Ching Chu's shell, replacing him, but it still cared about a detail, like being OOC? You just said something about how the points can't fall below zero. If they do, what happens? You will automatically be deported back to your original world. Original world? But in Shen Yuan's original world, his body had already expired. In other words, if he lost all his B or whatever points, what awaited him was, in short, death. I see you, MXTX. That's clever. It's, that's a way to maintain stakes. That's clever. Well, if he just ignored the male lead and avoided doing anything, things would be fine, right? No! Did you not just read the rules? Do the beginner course, or you dead! He raised his head and scanned the room, but among the disciples waiting on him by his bedside, he didn't see anyone that matched Luo Binga's description. Feigning unconcern, he said, Where is Luo Binga? Yue Qingyuan paused, giving him a strange look. Shen Ching Chu remained straight-faced, but was secretly filled with glee. Was it possible that the time wasn't ripe? That the male lead had yet to apprentice to Siang Chung Mountain Sect? Shidi, don't be angry, said Yue Qingyuan. An ominous premonition stirred in Shen Ching Chu's heart. Yue Qingyuan sighed. I know you don't like him, but that child's already worked hard enough, and he hasn't made any significant mistakes. Don't punish him any further, all right? Hearing this, Shen Ching Chu's lips felt dry. He wet them and said, You can just say it. Where is he? Yue Ching Yuan was silent for a moment. Whenever you finish stringing him up and beating him, haven't you always shut him in the woodshed? Shen Ching Chu's vision went dark. You know what this kind of feels like? That's a scene break, by the way. We're on page 21. You know what that kind of feels like? This kind of feels like, potentially, in very broad strokes, um, as if, um, uh, fucking Murazushe, um, if someone had gotten to, uh, um, Meng Yao in time. It feels like where it's going albeit in a hilarious and very different way. But it kind of feels like that. Like, are we going to introduce a person to this guy who goes pitch black in time for him to not go pitch black? 
Maybe I'm trying real hard not to look at chat right now. Just in case somebody's saying yes or no. Which, by the way, if you're going to uh, discuss spoilers, please put up all kinds of alarms. Uh, and uh, all, all kinds of disclaimers and such and notifications before you actually talk about spoilers. Because I know there will be people in here who haven't read it. And of course I haven't read it. And if I happen to glance at chat... Um, at the right slash wrong time, then that could lead to people getting spoiled. Um, so please be careful with your spoilers. And, uh, oh, let's keep going. In his previous life, Shen Yuan had been well off growing up, and he basically qualified as a modest example of a second generation rich kid. His two older brothers had been set to inherit the family business, and he doted on his little sister. The entire family had been very close. From early on, he'd known that even if he idled the rest of his life away, he'd never want for food. Perhaps due to this carefree upbringing, devoid of either competition or pressure, he came to believe that ranking in the top ten of a competition was good enough, so long as it had more than ten people. Okay, I think I just damn near hit the mic again. Therefore, he'd never understood what scum villains like Shen Ching Chu were thinking as they dug their own graves. Mark that sentence. The original Shen Ching Chu had both training and cultivation and the qualifications to prove his experience, not to mention the self-restraint to put up a facade. He wanted for neither standing nor reputation, and with the support of the world's largest sect, he would never want for money either. So why did he have not even a speck of the poise expected of an immortal? Why did he act like one of those bitter courtyard, com courtyard complex concubines with too much time on their hands? Courtyard complex concubines, which by the way, love the alliteration, has a footnote. Um, that refers to the complicated courtyard compounds of rich families in old China. Generally, once a concubine enters a family, they can't leave this area, which can contribute to bitterness and a feeling of being trapped. Uh, yeah. Why was he so unable to tolerate the main character, no matter how innocuous his behavior? And why did he spend day in and day out scheming up new torments for him, even getting others to do so in his place? Is, again, let the absolutely fucking buck wild theories begin. Is the reason why everything is like so, why the story is just so inconsistent and all over the place because it's just a bunch of people being beamed in to these characters positions and most of them finish the beginning tutorial and can therefore act out of character. Who knows? Where the fuck am I? Hang on. Even if Luo Bingo was blessed with heavenly talent, and even if his aptitude was exceptional to the point that he was more or less cheating, there was still no need to envy him to that extent, you know? Still, the blame didn't really lie with Shen Ching Chu. It lay with the author. These types of villains were everywhere in the novel, as numerous as carp in a river. It was just that Shen Ching Chu's character had been especially detailed and especially rotten. What could you do, though? The ultimate boss in this book was the protagonist himself, how could a firefly outshine the sun and moon? The cultivation world had dubbed Shen Ching Chu the Shu Ya Sword, so naturally he had the appearance and bearing to match. Even now, glancing left and right into a blurry, bron blurry bronze mirror, Shen Ching Chu was quite satisfied with what he saw. It was a fine-featured face with pitch-black eyes and brows, thin nose and lips, and a most scholarly air. Combined with a slender body and long legs, he could more or less be considered beautiful. Though his real age was unclear, this was a cultivation novel. Shen Ching Chu had achieved mid-core formation, which meant he'd perfectly preserved his youthful appearance. He was certainly many times better looking than Shen Yuan's headcanon for him. He still couldn't compare to Luo Bing. Uh, I love that even now he's like, I mean, 
nowhere near as hot as this main guy who I hate so much. The moment Chen Ching Chu thought of Luo Binga, he was instantly struck with a pounding headache. He wanted to go see Luo Binga, who was currently shut in the woodshed, but as soon as he took a single step, that ear-piercing notification rang once more in his mind. Warning. OOC warning. Shen Ching Chu would not take the initiative to visit Luo Binga. Fine, I'll get someone else to bring him. No problem there, right? Shen Ching Chu snapped. He thought for a moment, then called, Ming Fan! A youth around 16 years old, tall and thin, properly ran in through the door. This disciple is here. What instructions does Shifu have? Shen Ching Chu couldn't help but send a couple more glances his way. Ming Fan's appearance was respectable enough. It was just that his face was a bit unfortunate, with a sharp mouth and sunken cheeks. Internally, Shen Ching Chu tisked and lamented, as expected for classic cannon fodder. This was the most senior of the original Shen Ching Chu's disciples, <coughs> Luo Binga Xingxiang, Ming Fan. This was also the legendary lowest level of cannon fodder. Getting called a red shirt right on your character's introduction. Needless to say, when it came to things like locking Luo Binghe out of the dorms late at night or feeding him false techniques on purpose, Ming Fan was the ever-present perpetrator. Whenever Shi Ching Shu felt inclined to torment Luo Binghe, Ming Fan was always his most useful assistant and most enthusiastic supporter. Knowing that this child's fate in the original work wasn't much better than his own, Shen Ching Chu couldn't help but look at him with the pitying gaze of a fellow victim. Go bring Bing Ha here. Ming Fan was plainly unnerved. Whenever Shen Ching Chu, whenever Shen Ching Chu, had called for Luo Bing Ha in the past, he'd always referred to him as that little beast, ungrateful brat, this wretch, or whelp. He'd hardly even used Luo Bing Ha's full name more than a few times. Where had this sudden change come from? But Ming Fan didn't dare question a command from his Shifu. He jogged to the woodshed right away and knocked and kicked the door twice. Get out! Shizun's calling you! Shen Jing Chu paced within his room, exhaustively examining the system within his mind. B points, also known as points awarded for being a badass. The more B points one accrues, the more magnificent, high quality, and first rate the work has become. That's the metric? That's what we're... As long as people are doing things that are super badass, that means that the novel is becoming more high quality? Interesting. Then how can I raise my B points? One, change the nonsensical plot and raise the average IQ of the villains and supporting characters. Two, avoid landmines that break suspension of disbelief. Three, ensure the main character's satisfaction points. Four, discover and finish hidden plot events. Shen Ching Chu analyzed each, op each option one by one. In short, not only did he have to clean up the original Shen Ching Chu's messes, the Shen Ching Chu who'd had a veritable mob of enemies coming for his ass, he also had to stop other characters from creating more messes. He didn't even know if he could preserve his own sorry life, and here he still needed to ensure that the main character preserved his op time in the spotlight, and harem size. All those unsolved mysteries, those plot holes the author had neglected to fill, and now Shen Ching Chu had to grab a shovel and sweat away, filling them in himself. Uh -huh. Great master, airplane shooting toward the sky, had claimed that proud immortal demon Wei's purpose was perfectly clear, and that each word had been written with a single goal in mind. To satisfy the reader. Oh, if you only have that goal in mind, then it's going to be the most fan y badassy shit okay okay 
This was especially evident in how, in the future, the OP male lead would play innocent, a wolf in sheep's clo clothing, hunting other wolves, exacting revenge against lowlifes, generating enough satisfaction to overturn the heavens. Thus, the work's popularity had swelled rapidly as it grew longer and longer, until no foot-binding cloth could compare to its length. Keeping track of the plot had been stressful, even as a reader. Insane landmines were everywhere. How could he manage to avoid all of them? What kind of plot would qualify as not nonsensical, Shen Ching Chu asked. The standard is subjectively determined. It depends on the reader's reactions. I mean, okay. <laughs> then how many points do I need to collect to launch a beginner level quest? <sighs> oh God, I keep hitting the mic. I'm so sorry. I keep scra like scraping shit against it. The timing is situationally determined. When the requirements have been met, the system will automatically notify you. Okay. Okay. Subjectively determined. Situationally determined. What an all-purpose remedy. Shen Ching Chu scoffed, then, up then upon hearing the door open, looked back to see a youth slowly walk in. Shizun. The youth spoke respectfully, even though his movements were unsteady, and he still managed to stand perfectly straight. The small smile that had been forming at the corner of Shen Ching Chu's mouth froze. He was definitely dead. Before him was the face that would, in the future, infatuate everyone who saw it. From 80-year-old women to infants still in their swaddling clothes, the Gary Stu protagonist's face and he'd beaten it to this extent? He was dead. But even though this face bore clear evidence of abuse and was covered in injuries, the protagonist was, as expected, still the protagonist. Luo Binghe's two eyes were as bright as morning stars, a tender shoot of a handsome young man. That firm yet humble countenance, demonstrating his noble and unyielding spirit, that pencil straight back and, st back and stance, Evincing. A proud court. Evincing. I've never seen that word before. Evincing. To evince? I'm looking that up later. A proud core that would rather break than bend. In that instant, a flood of parallelisms and other stylistic devices, flo de de devices? flooded through Shen Ching Chu's heart, passage after passage, jumbling together into countless stanzas of praise that almost spilled forth out of his mouth. At first sight, you say? Luckily, Shen Ching Chu managed to rein it in, albeit while internally yelling about how close he'd come. The underlying hardware of this protagonist's halo of excellence was really too much. He almost couldn't hold back. Hang on, we have art. Look at this. Look at these boys. Oh, man. I'm sorry, I got lost in the cover again. Look at them! Oh! Whew! All right. Get me out of there. All right. Pfft. Here I went to turn the page. I'm on a new one. Uh, no. Lie. I am turning the page. Wow. Shen Ching Chu's mouth twitched as he watched Luo Bing uh, limp through the door, then struggle to kneel. I can't afford your submission. If you pay respects to me today, you are definitely going to kneecap me in the future. No need. Shen Ching Chu stopped Luo Bing uh, and with a flick of his wrist, he tossed over a small bottle. This is medicine. He paused before adding in a mocking tone, don't let anyone see. They might think my Qi Jing Peak abuses its disciples. Shen Jing Chu had assumed his role quickly. Even though he'd done something daringly subversive by handing over medicine, he'd also done it with a nasty attitude. Therefore, it was passably in line with Shen Jing Chu's hypocritical nature, his tendency to do evil while he, while he simultaneously feared others finding out. Instead, the system didn't send an OOC notification. Shen Ching Chu let out a sigh of relief. 
Luo Binga had expected that his master had called him for further instruction. He never would have thought that he would be offered medicine. At first he froze, then he respectfully received the small bottle with both hands and said, with honest gratitude, Thank you for the medicine, Shizun. At this point in time, Luo Binga's face was still full of innocence, his smile sincere and gentle like the warm, dawning sun. Shen Ching Chu stared at it for a while, then turned his head away. Prior to his darkening, this male lead's personality was that of a model in upright youth. Shine a bit of sunlight on him and he'd glow, give him a scrap of goodwill and he'd return it tenfold, that type. It would not have been an exaggeration to call him a little lamb. This disciple will henceforth redouble his efforts and not let Shizun be disappointed, Luo Binga happily continued. Uh, no, if you redouble your efforts, I'm guessing your original master would really be disappointed. If Shen Ching Chu hadn't read Proud Immortal Demon Way, he would have found the sight of this scene heart-wrenching, and he probably would have shed a couple of sympathetic tears for Luo Binga's plight. As it was, he'd seen everything from beginning to end from an omniscient perspective, so he'd been privy to Luo Binga's plentiful and colorful thoughts post-blackening. To wit, Luo Binga's current pitifulness directly correlated to the future ferocity of his wanton laughter as he ground his foot into your head. Though he would wear the mask of a kind and humble gentleman, inside, all his thoughts would be about how he'd rip out your tendons, pull out your bones, peel off your skin, and hang it all out to dry. Luo Binga smiled. Today, the humiliation this disciple once suffered will be returned one hundredfold. For injuring my hands and feet, I'll tear off your limbs and grind them to dust. Proud Immortal Demon Way, Selected Passage, Number Two. After that, he had, in actual fact, carved Shen Ching Chu into a human stick. Binga, how's your cultivation process? Shi Ching Chu asked in a deliberately aloof tone as he moved to sit in a sandalwood chair. With that single Binga, he terrified himself to the point that frightened goosebumps rose all down his back. Luo Binga's back also shook with a clear shudder, but he still managed a smile tinged with shyness. This disciple is stupid and still failed to understand. That was about right. With a fake cultivation manual, the fact that he hadn't yet su suffered a chi deviation was all thanks to his incredible protagonist-level durability. If he'd actually understood anything in that manual, it would have been a miracle. Boy, come hang out with me, Shen Ching Chu yelled within his heart. This master will deliver unto you the correct techniques. That demonic system's warning notification started blaring incessantly. I was only thinking about it, Shen Ching Chu said to the system. Of course I know it would be a violation. Out loud, he spoke casually. Today, this master punished you out of his own impatience. After all, time waits for no one. Now that I think about it, you've been under me for a while. How old are you this year? This disciple is fourteen, Luo Binga obediently replied. Eh? Fourteen, huh? That meant that at this point, this master and this disciple, Shen Qingchu and Luo Binga, had already passed the incident at the mountain entrance. There, the latter had been forced to kneel as punishment. It meant they had also passed the incident where Luo Binga's fellow Qingjing Pink disciples had pummeled him en masse, as well as the incident where he'd back-talked Shizun and been strung up and beaten, in addition to the incident where he'd ruined the peak's talisman and been punished with hard labor. Such a glorious track record. Shen Ching Chu waved goodbye to his last hope of survival. Shen Ching Chu rested his forehead on one hand and waved Luo Binga away with the other, I wish to be alone. That's a scene break. Shen Ching Chu was an easygoing person. Since his residential address had already changed to Proud Immortal Demon Way, and since he'd already kicked the bucket in his original world, he figured he might as well try making it work here. <laughs> you know, you know when you die and then you turn out to be in a story that you didn't even like? And if you fail here, you fail there, you're just going to die anyway. Ah, take it in stride. Just take it on the chin. You know. He'd arrived in a cultivation setting, received a body with decent martial ability and swordsmanship for free, and was also part of a famous righteous sect. 
If he wanted to stand out, he could stand out, and if he wanted to lie low, he could hole up on Sang Chung Mountain Sex Chi Ching Jing Peak and be a recluse. What was there to complain about? The only slightly difficult thing would be finding a girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but of all the shit happening, clear, clear out of nowhere, the only slightly difficult thing would be finding a girlfriend. In this sort of male power fantasy stallion novel, and I have never heard the term stallion novel before, and I'm not sure why, maybe it's like a, 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 a in the world of Danmei, it's a really common word. Or maybe somehow it's just missed me in fandom all this time. I have never heard it called a stallion novel. And now I refuse to call it anything else. Holy shit. Got so excited I lost my place. One moment please. In this sort of male power fantasy stallion novel, any woman inevitably belonged to the male lead as long as she wasn't ugly. Everyone knew this. Still, Shen Ching Chu was a man of few needs. He would have been satisfied just idling away to a ripe old age. In that way, it wouldn't be that different from how his previous life had been going. However, Luo Bingho was a factor. Making a name for himself was right out. If Shen Ching Chu remained anywhere near the original work's setting, even if he found some non-existent paradise to seclude himself in, once Luo Bingho took power, he'd still be able to carve Shen Ching Chu into a human stick. It's not that I don't want to cling to the male lead's thighs, but who made him so damn black-hearted? He's the type who seeks thousand-fold retribution. After his daily cursing at Great Master Airplane, Shin Ching Chu quickly set some goals. In short, familiarize himself with his environment, work with the system as much as possible, diligently pursue more accomplishments, earn B-points, and unfreeze the OOC function as soon as possible. If the situation started looking grim, he'd have to seek out an alternative strategy. Seng Chung's twelve peaks were like twelve giant swords forged by nature, steep and magnificent, piercing the skies. Shen Ching Chu's... I don't know why. Ching Jing? Not difficult to say. But because it comes after a run of new sounds for my mouth... I trip over that, but not the new sounds. It's so funny. Shen Ching Chu's Ching Jing Peak. Ha! Wasn't the tallest, but it was the most tranquil, heavily forested with tall bamboo. On top of that, uh, as basically all of Shen Ching Chu's disciples needed to learn the four scholarly arts of Gu Chun playing, Go, calligraphy, and painting, from time to time the clear sounds of reading and the murmur of the Gu Chun would drift on the breeze. It was an excellent destination for scholarly youths, steeped in ancient arts and literature and perfectly aligned with the needs of the original Shen Ching Chu, that poser. As Shen Ching Chu passed a group of disciples, they respectfully asked after his health. He schooled his countenance to match the original's cold, aloof look, nodding slightly while walking with his hands clasped behind his back. He managed to get by with this, troubled only over how he was supposed to match the book's names to these wavering faces. This wasn't Shen Ching Chu's most pressing concern, however. That was self-defense. And for that, he needed to figure out how to employ the original flavor's martial ability and swordsmanship. If he remembered correctly, before Luo Bing had darkened, Sang Chung Mountain Sect suffered a succession of significant incidents. Things like demonic incursions and the Immortal Alliance Conference. Shen Ching Chu would have to deal with all of them. If all he had to work with was a shell with no cultivation ability, forget following the plot, the male lead wouldn't have to lift a finger before an insignificant no-name monster got him killed. Shen Ching Chu walked deep into the forest, alone. Only after confirming no one was in sight did he remove the sword at his waist. He held the scabbard in his left hand and the hilt in his right, and he slowly pulled it out. Xu Ya had been with Shen Ching Chu since he was young and newly known, and it could have been considered prestigious unto itself. The flash of its blade was snow white, luminous but not blinding, definitely a top class armament. When one channeled spiritual energy into the weapon, the blade glowed faintly. As Shen Ching Chu pondered exactly how to channel spiritual energy, the sword in his hand began to shimmer white. 
It seemed like he'd inherited the original's cultivation and martial abilities as well. His mind had filled in the gaps without him needing to consciously remember. Wanting to see Xu Ya's power, Shen Ching Chu casually slashed once. Who knew a single slash would be so terrifying? The sword's arc dazzled like a flash of lightning released from his palm, so bright that even UV-400 sunglasses wouldn't have saved him if he hadn't closed his eyes. When he opened them again, he beheld a deep ditch that had been carved into the ground, as if it had been split by lightning. Holy shit! Shen Ching Chu remained expressionless, but his heart surged with exhilaration. I'm kind of jealous of MXT- well, I'm jealous for a lot of things about MXTX. I mean, let's- be real. But I am jealous that she found a concept with an old world slash ancient setting, but in which she could make modern metaphors and comparisons and similes. Because that is a challenge of writing something that doesn't take place present day right is that your brain is used to coming up with modern present day metaphors but that doesn't fly if you're writing about a time in history and that's a challenge and it's particularly a challenge for me and here she is with every excuse in the world to uh, come up with modern metaphors damn So damn awesome. Power worthy of a character who is a peak's soul master. With this level of cultivation, if he diligently trained for the next 20 years, then maybe in the future, as a last resort, if he absolutely had to face that overpowered Luo Bing, uh, he might just be able to flee in disgrace. Yes, all he wanted was to be able to flee in disgrace. He wanted to practice more, but he heard the sound of subtle footsteps snapping dry twigs. In truth, that sound was still still a long way off, but his five senses were highly sensitive, and it would have been difficult not to notice. Shen Ching Chu studied that deep ditch into in the. In the mm -hmm, sorry, I got two. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm ADHD, so like, it happens. Shen Ching Chu studied that deep ditch into the, in the ground. Emphasis and syllable. Shen Ching Chu studied that deep ditch in the ground then sheathed his sword with a clink before hiding himself within the greenery. The footsteps came closer and closer. There was more than one person. As expected, a moment later, the first face to appear was Luo Bing'e's, seeming to shine with its own light. The first sound, however, was the crisp, delicate voice of a young maiden. Aluo, Aluo, look, there's a huge ditch in the ground here. Upon hearing this nickname, Shen Ching Chu almost staggered from his hiding place. Shen Ching Chu's youngest female disciple, Ning Ying Ying, the system said concisely. What use was that introduction? Shen Ching Chu hissed. Everyone knows that only one person addresses Lo Bing uh, that way. I love that he hated this book, but he's like, oh, who the fuck do you think I am? Of course I remember this one girl's nickname. Hello? Well, way of addressing Luo Bing'e. The pretty girl followed Luo Bing following Luo Bing'e came into view as well. She looked slightly younger than Luo Bing'e, lovely and adorable, her braided hair bound with orange ribbons as she ran and skipped, brimming with naivete. Every proper cultivation novel had to have a charming young Shumei type. Yeah, and then kill her. This young Shimei inspired some complicated feelings in Shen Ching Chu. This was because he had designs on Ning Ying Ying. Ah, no, more like the original Shen Ching Chu had designs on Ning Ying Ying. Shen Ching Chu's character settings were stuck on shady hypocrite. Since on the surface he looked pure-hearted, free of desire, and immune to wicked temptations, then beneath that surface he had to be immoral, shameless, scummy, and despicable. He was a teacher, but he harbored filthy intentions toward his obedient and cheerful disciple. He tried to carry them out several times in the story, and he very nearly succeeded. One can, however, imagine the result of daring to try to get a taste of the male lead's woman. While reading, Shen Ching Chu had thought it a little strange that Luo Bing uh, hadn't tried to castrate the creep. 
His failure to do so absolutely didn't jive with Binga's dark charm. So he'd gone to the comment section and joined the mob in flooding it with posts to the tune of, Please castrate Chen Ching Chu. No castration. We unsubscribe. It's the touches of realism, you know? Upon reflection and closer consideration, Chen Ching Chu was profoundly terrified. If the appeal had succeeded back then, he'd absolutely have had to chop off the hand with which he had made those posts. Luo Binga glanced over once and offered only a half-hearted smile. But Ning Ying Ying wanted his attention, and she fumbled around for something to say. Tell me, Aluo, which Xixiang was practicing their sword glares out here? On Qingjing Peak, I'm afraid only Shizun has this level of cultivation, Luo Binga answered as he picked up an axe and started chopping at a tree. He only spoke one line, then paid her no more heed. His focus was entirely on his own actions, as he raised and lowered the axe, chopping in earnest. The trees... I did it again. The trees were neither thin nor weak, and the axe was half-rusted. By this time, Luo Binghe was only 14 years old, so chopping was tremendously taxing. Soon, sweat poured down his face. Ning 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 sat on an old log, watching him with her face propped in her hands. After a while, she was bored again and wheedled, Aluo, Aluo, play with me. I can't. Luo Binghe didn't even have the time to wipe away his sweat. He continued to swing the axe as he, as he spoke. Ar Xixiang told me that after I finish chopping today's wood, I also have to carry the water. If I finish chopping quickly, I can clear out some time to meditate. Ar Xixiang are really awful, always making you do this and that. It looks to me like they're bullying you on purpose. Ning Ying Ning Ying Ying pouted. Hmm, I'll go back and tell you soon. Once I do, they won't dare bully you anymore. Until this point, Shen Jing Chu had been treating this experience like he was at a shoot for a scene of a proud immortal demon way drama, just passing through and enjoying a tale of two childhood sweethearts. Upon hearing this, he paled in shock. No, 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 no. You absolutely can't come tell me. What am I supposed to do? I can't be OOC. Who exactly should I punish? But at this time, even while the young Luo Binga was experiencing the full depth and breadth of humanity's hardships, he still had the pure heart of a white lotus. He shook his head at Ning Ying Ying. Absolutely don't. I don't want to trouble Shizun with these small matters. Our Shishiang don't mean any harm. They just see that I'm young and want to give me more chances to train. In that instant, Shang Ching Chu could almost see 10,000 rays of light behind Luo Binga. He couldn't help but back up three steps, unable to look directly at a male lead who had achieved such a transcendent state of being, who'd attained such profound enlightenment. While Ning Ying Ying chattered, Luo Binga finished chopping his quota of wood. Putting the axe away, he found a random patch of relatively clean ground and sat down cross-legged with his eyes closed. Inside his heart, Shen Ching Chu released a long sigh. In truth, even during the early misery-ridden part of the storyline, the protagonist's overpowered nature had already started to emerge. The cultivation manual Ming Fan had given Luo Bing a was a fake. The more he trained by following it, the more his techniques should have degraded until they were absolute rubbish. But with his peerless talent and his body's half-demon blood, Luo Binghe had managed to eke out a path of his own by complete accident. It was entirely unscientific. While Shen Jing Chu sighed, there came the sound of another set of jumbled footsteps. As soon as he heard them, Shen Jing Chu knew that what was coming wouldn't be good. Ming Fan stepped out into the clearing, leading several low-ranked disciples. Upon seeing Ni Ning Ying Ying, he delightedly strode up and grabbed her hand. Shashime, Shashime, I finally found you. How could you come to a place like this without saying anything? The backside of the mountain is so large. What if some dangerous beast or poisonous snake leapt out? Come, Xixiang has something fun to show you. Naturally, Ming Feng saw Luo Binghe silently sitting nearby, but he ignored the other boy, as if he were nothing but air. However, Luo Binghe, being very well-mannered, opened his eyes and spoke. Xixiang. I'm not afraid of poisonous snakes or dangerous beasts, Ning Ying... Ning Ying Ying giggled. Besides, isn't Aluo with me? 
Ming Fun swept his gaze toward Lu Luo Bing uh, squinted and scoffed. To Shen Ching Chu, Ming Fun's thoughts couldn't have been clearer. He heard the affectionate way Ning Ying Ying addressed Luo Bing uh, and in that moment, his annoying Shidi had become even more irritating. In the end, Ning Ying Ying had a young girl's disposition, completely unshakable to take a hint or read the room. What fun, thi what fun thing does Xixiang have? She asked, head tilted. Hurry up and show me. Ming Fun became all smiles. He unfastened a deep green jade ornament from his race waist and held it in front of her. Shimei, my family just came to visit, and they brought me lots of high quality and interesting little trinkets. I thought this one was particularly pretty. I'll give it to you. Ning Ying Ying took it from him and examined it closely in the sunlight shining through the leaves. Well, do you like it? Ming Fun asked eagerly. From his hiding place, Shen Chen Chu finally remembered. This was that scene! Not good! He shouldn't have come! Danger! He couldn't be blamed for not remembering clearly. How could someone who'd cursed dumb fuck author, dumb fuck novel remember ancient content from the beginning of a serialized novel that had been running for four years and covered an in-narrative span of 200 years. He'd spent 20 days binging the novel from start to finish, so he had clean forgotten that wump-filled arc of pointless abuse that covered Luo Bingha's beginnings at the sect. Okay? I think okay might uh, end up being uh, this series. Uh, he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Ning Ying Ying had absolutely no idea what was high quality and what wasn't. After looking nonchalantly at it for a while, she tossed the jade ornament back. Ming Fun's smile froze on his face. What? This color is so ugly. The one Aluo has is prettier. Ning Ying Ying said carelessly as she wrinkled her nose. Not only did Ming Fun look unhappy, but Luo Bing -a, who'd been wisely pretending to not exist, trembled lightly as his eyes snapped open. Does Shidi also wear this kind of thing? Ming Fun spot spat through gritted teeth. Luo Bing -a hesitated slightly. He hadn't managed to answer when Ning Ying Ying barged in. Of course he does. Every day he wears it close around his neck. It's his treasure. He refuses to even let me look at it. Although Luo Bing -a was usually so composed, at this point his expression also changed. He unconsciously clutched the Goddess of Mercy Guan Yin pendant around his neck, hidden beneath his clothes. Your IQ and EQ, young lady, the male lead is talking is taking all the collateral damage. Ning Ying Ying absolutely hadn't considered the consequences of the words as she said them. She'd only been thinking of how she always saw Luo Bing -a wearing that jade Guan Yin close to this close to his skin never parting with it girls in a in particular in girls in particular invariably wanted to get their hands on the things their crushes treasured which they hoped would confer upon them the satisfaction of being in a special position but luo binga simply refused to give her that recognition displeased she'd brought it up in this half tweed half brazen manner of course he'd refused okay Luo Binga's washerwoman mother had spent almost her entire life savings to finally, with great difficulty, give her son the consecrated, pro the consecrated protective charm she wanted for him. It was the only bit of warmth in Luo Binga's dark world, always by his side, and even in the future, when he was at his darkness, it could summon up his last dregs of humanity. So, how could he randomly hand it to anyone else? Ming Fun, both angry and jealous, advanced a few steps. Luo Shidi, you sure are stuck up, refusing to show Ning Ying Ying, who Ning Ying Ying Shimei, your pendant. He snarled. If this keeps up, when we face strong enemies in the future, will you refuse to even lend a hand? Young man, there's definitely a logical gap between your first and second lines. It's fine if he doesn't want to. Shishong, don't bully him. Ning Ying Ying hadn't thought wings hadn't thought things would turn out like this, and she anxiously stamped her feet. How could Luo Bing a best Ming Fun at this point? Not to mention a group of junior disciples who were Ming Fun's lackeys were also ganging up on him. In a moment that Jade Guanyin fell from Luo Bing's neck into Ming Fun's hands, 
Ming Fan raised it up for a look, then suddenly laughed loudly. Why are you laughing? Nin Ying Ying said, confused. I thought it had to be some nice treasure, but for him to protect it so fiercely. Shimei, guess what the, Guess what it is? Ming Fan tossed the jade pendant into Nin Ying Ying's hands, positively gleeful as he chuckled. It's a counterfeit. Counterfeit? Ning Ying Ying asked. What's that? Give it back. Luo Bing uh, enunciated each word. His fists slowly clenched, a treacherous undercurrent surging in the depths of his eyes. Shen Ching Chu's fingers involuntarily, involuntarily twitched once, then again, and again. Naturally, he remembered that the Jade Guan Yin was a counterfeit. He also knew it was Luo Binga's biggest berserk button. For an entire year, the washerwoman had scrimped and saved on food and utilities, but because she lacked experience, a con man had tricked her into playing a high, paying a high price for a fake charm. Heartbroken after this, her body had steadily deteriorated. Luo Binga would undoubtedly be able to forget this pain for the rest of his life. Be unable to forget this pain. Emphasis syllable. Thus, this was the one insult that Luo Binghe could never tolerate. As a bystander, Shen Qingqiu desperately wanted to reach out, beat up Ming Fan, snatch back the jade pendant, and toss it to Luo Binghe. Also, if he did that, maybe Ming Fan wouldn't thoroughly offend Luo Binghe. Then later on, he could keep his paltry little life. OOC. Thank you. Shut up. You want it back? I'll give it back. Who knows which secret stall this cheap thing was purchased from. Ming Fun plucked the pendant from Ning Ying Ying's hands, disgust in his tone. I'm afraid giving it to Shimei would dirty her hands. So he said, but he had not the slightest intention of returning it. Luo Binghe's face was tight. Suddenly, he struck out with both fists, hitting the couple of low-ranked disciples res restraining him. Enraged as he was, his blows were not directed by technique. They were random strikes fueled by the anger within. At first, he managed to cow these low-ranked disciples, but they quickly realized what, that he was, in truth, incredibly weak, and that only his demeanor was impressive. Also, Ming Fun was snarling at them. What are you standing there for? He dared to attack a Xixiang. Teach him what it means to respect sen seniority. At this, they all regained their courage and surrounded Luo Binga, clobbering him. Ning Ying Ying was scared off, scared stiff, her pitiful brain capacity still not understanding how things had progressed to this state. Shishang, she cried, how could you do this? Hurry up and tell them to stop, or, or I'll never talk to you again. Shimei, don't be angry, Ming Fan said in a panic. I'll tell them to stop hitting this guy, okay? He was distracted. Before he finished speaking, Luo Binghe broke free from the many arms and legs entangling him and sent a fist into Ming Fan's nose. A wild wail. Two twin streams of fresh blood jetted from Ming Fan's nostrils. Although she had been about to burst into tears at the sight of this, Ning Ying Ying couldn't help but let out a stifled laugh. Sister, do you re sister really, do you like Luo Binghe, or do you want to screw him over? Shen Cheng Chu howled in his mind. Before this point, Ming Fan might feasibly have let Luo Binghe, Binghe go, but now that he'd been humiliated for front in front of his crush, he couldn't back down, no matter what. The two boys twisted into a fighting heap, but no matter how exceptional Luo Binghe's talent, he was still young and he hadn't been cultivating with proper instruction. It was, for the most part, a one-sided beatdown, yet Luo Binghe remained silent, teeth clenched. Shen Ching Chu wanted desperately to intervene, but the system exploded with a terrifying cascade of alarms. Severe OC, severe, o severe OOC, severe OOC. Important things must be repeated three times. In this situation, Shen Ching Chu would choose to smile, he would watch from the sidelines, hand in, hands in his sleeves, or personally beat Luo Binga himself. 
Was it really going to make him look on while a child was being abused? This was really too much. Even so, Shen Jing Chu shouldn't afford to take risks. While he was anxiously fretting, a compromise suddenly came to him. Seng Shung Mountain Sect had a, pro had a minor technique. Plucking leaves, flying flowers. At a glance, it wasn't very useful. Just aesthetic and interesting. The novel had described how Luo Binga used the technique to win the nth woman's affections. As Shen Ching Chu had, since his arrival, been furiously reviewing various manuals, he had also recently seen a description of it. He plucked a nearby leaf and channeled a touch of spiritual power into it. The first time, he channeled too much. The leaf couldn't withstand the power and instantly split into several pieces. He succeeded the second time, held the leaf between his fingertips, and gently blew, letting go. The leaf shot toward Ming Fan like an airborne knife. Like an airborne knife. That's, that's, that's nice. Uh. Oh, well, of course, that leads me to, ah, there we go. As Ming Feng's long and horrible scream split the air, Shen Ching Chu shook out his hand and wiped a bread of sweat from his forehead. No wonder they said that to an expert. Even a flower or tree could be used to... No wonder they said that to an expert. Even a flower or tree could be used to hurt people. But he hadn't killed Ming Fun just now. Right? Luo Binga had suffered quite a few punches and kicks. But suddenly it was Ming Fun who staggered backward. Luo Binga looked up. Fresh blood dripped from his forehead past his eyes. But he hadn't expected to see Ming Fun stretching out his own hand. His palm also covered in blood. Ming Fun stared in disbelief. You dare to use the knife? Due to its fierceness, Ning, Jing, Ning, Ning Ying hadn't risked coming close to their fight, but now she hurried to throw herself between the two. No, no, Aluo, don't use a knife. It wasn't him. Aluo didn't use a knife. It wasn't him. Luo Bing, Bing A also had no idea what had happened. He closed his mouth tightly and tried to clean the blood from his face. Did you see it clearly? Was he holding a knife? Ming Fun interrogated the other disciples as blood seeped out of his back like he'd been cut with the edge of a sword. The disciples looked around at each other in complete disarray, some shaking their heads, some nodding. Ming Fun was a spoiled and pampered young master, and he had never suffered this level of physical pain. The sight of his own hand covered in blood sent panic surging through his heart. The puzzling thing was that there was no one evidence of a weapon either on the ground or on Luo Bingye's slender person. It couldn't have vanished into thin air, right? Shen Ching Chu held his breath. His vision suddenly flashed red, and a huge line of floating text popped up before him in a blood-red as... Who I'm so excited. In a blood red, as eye-catching, as it was bone-chilling. What the fuck? Violation. OOC. B points. Minus 10. Current B points. 90. Shen Jing Chu released his breath, relieved. He'd been prepared for a deduction in the realm of 50 or even or even to lose everything. Only 10 was much better than he thought. He'd take the loss for now. There would be future chances to earn those points back. Then shortly after he let out that breath, Ming Fan pointed to Luo Binga and yelled, Get him! Shen Ching Chu nearly vomited a mouth full of blood straight from his chest. The gang of disciples heard the order and tackled Luo Binga. Shen Ching Chu unconsciously tore off a nearby handful of leaves and sent them all singing through the air. He regretted it as soon as they left his hand. 
the fuck am I doing? No matter what happens, Luo Bing uh, is the magnificent male lead. It's not like he's never been ganged up on before. Like they could beat him to death? Like, hell, you need to worry, self. He might have gotten away with the first interface, but now? Fantastic. Even an idiot would notice something was off. Numerous disciples were splattered with blood. They anxiously gathered around Ming Fan, no longer ga daring to gang up on Lo Bing Er. Shi Xiong, what's going to be on? Shi Xiong, I've also been cut. Ming Fan's face was green and white. Only after a long moment did he yell out, Go! Leading his group of lackeys, all covering their backs and holding their arms, he frantically withdrew. They truly came like the wind and left like it, too. Only Ning Ying Ying remained, standing there dumbly for a while. Then she shouted, Aluo, were you the one who sent them running just now? Luo Binga shook his head, expression gloomy. He stood up straightening with difficulty. Then he bent down again with a tense look, searching the ground for something, turning over, turning over fallen tables, dry twigs, and mud this way and that, over and over again. Shen Ching Chu knew what he was looking for. Naturally, it was that jade pendant which had been lost in the confusion. He saw it, clear as day, before fighting. Ming Fun had swung out his arm, and as he did, the pendant's red string had snagged on a branch high above her heads, high above their heads. But Chen Ching Chu couldn't point that out. Also, just after he'd sent this, the, just after he'd sent the leaves flying, he'd heard that heart-shattering system scream. Violation, O O C. B points, negative 10, times 6. Current B points, 30. In an instant, he'd fallen below a passing grade. So one leaf equals 10 points? Don't use such simple, crude arithmetic. Ning Ying Ying didn't dare speak. After all, she had caused this entire affair. If not for her big mouth, Luo Binga would never have suffered a beating, and on top of that, he'd lost his pendant for no good reason. She swiftly helped. She swiftly began to help Luo Bing in his shirt search. They of course remained empty-handed, even if his, even as it became dark. Luo Bing stood dumbly in place, staring at the mess of the ground. They had overturned every speck of dirt in sight, but still they hadn't found it. Oh, no wonder. It's time to switch my tea. I was like, why did my original tea get cold? Because it's been sitting there for over an hour. An hour and a half. God, once, not even a sip from the tea, it's still too hot. They, of course, remained empty handed even as it became dark. Luo Binga stood dumbly in place, staring at the mess of the ground. They had overturned every speck of dirt in sight, but still they hadn't found it. Aluo, if we can't find it, let's just let it be, said Ning Ying Ying, a little frightened to see him so dazed and out of his mind. She took his hand. I'm sorry, I'll buy you another one later, all right? Luo Binga paid her no heed. He slowly withdrew his hand and walked toward the forest edge, head lowered. Ning Ying Ying hurried after him. Shen Ching Chu was truly impressed with himself. These two ch children had searched for an entire afternoon, and he'd actually gone and watched the whole time. How could he explain that to himself, other than, than to say that he had too much fucking time on his hands? He'd waited until they'd gone a good distance, then finally emerged from his hiding place. He raised his head and looked about, then tapped his foot on the ground. In that moment, he experienced what it meant to have... A body as light as a swallow. And with great ease, he rose and plucked that jade pendant from where it was caught on a branch. In truth, Shen Cheng Chu wanted to secretly return it to Luo Binga, Binga. But he was now familiar with this system's rules. That would definitely count as a violation. He didn't have 
any B points to squander. After some thought, Shen Ching Chu decided to keep it for the time being. Maybe later this jade pendant will be of great use. For example, perhaps during a critical moment when his fate hung by a thread, he could bargain it in exchange for his life? Shen Ching Chu gave this possibility serious consideration. Right then, a line of green text with a pronounced 3D effect jumped into view. Congratulations. Obtained key item, fake jade guan yin. Uh, oh, is that X1? or? I actually don't think I've ever heard this X and this particular thing pronounced this way, pronounced before. Hmm. Times, times one. Times one? Is it times one? I, ooh, I think so. Fake Jade Guan Yin times one. For changing the, st mm -hmm -hmm. for changing the storyline, Shen Ching Chu IQ plus 100. Current B points, 130. Please continue to work hard. All the points that had just been deducted were not only restored, he got even more. On top of that, given the influence this Jade Guan Yin had on Luo Bing -e, it was definitely a high-level item, and it could be used to preserve his life. What a happy surprise! A rush of satisfaction flowed through Chen Ching Chu, cleansing him of the gloom that had set in while he crouched in the dark for a whole afternoon. At this moment, even the system's eminently punchable Google Translate-like voice was melodious beyond compare. Meanwhile, outside the forest, Luo Binga had already left the back of the mountain, and he slowly unclenched his fist. Lying in his palm was a whole green leaf. Its edges were sharp and stained with blood. Uh, where I wonder if there's a convenient stopping point in a couple of pages, because we're almost at 50. We are very close. Let me see. Yeah, we've only got one more page to 50. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I'm doing it the hard way. Oh, Jesus. Uh, hi. Uh, no, we've got like, yeah, we've got like 10 pages. I don't think we're quite going to get there. But is this middle of page 48 a good place to stop? Or should I continue for, like, a couple few pages until we really get, uh, like, up to the 5 o'clock deadline, you know? Because it doesn't look like, immediately, just trying to, you know, skim over everything so I don't see anything. It doesn't look like there's a stopping, much of a stopping point beyond this last scene break. Yeah, continuing. Alrighty. We are in the middle of page 48, by the way. In the days of Shen Ching Chu's recuperation following his awakening from that inexplicable fever, Yue Ching Yuan came to visit him many times. As the sect leader of the world's foremost major cultivation sect, which might be likened to being the principal of a comprehensive cultivation university, his workload had to be heavy. Yet he was still so considerate to his Shidi. As a stranger in a strange land, Shen Ching Chu practically wanted to shed tears of gratitude. That the original flavor had actually turned on such a kind superior and fellow disciple that he had breached their brotherly covenant just like that. It just made clear how much of a scumbag he was. Now that Shidi has rested for several days, has your health improved? Yue Ching Yuan asked, his eyes full of earnest concern as he held one of the bamboo house's porcelain tea bowls. I have long since recovered, said Chen Ching Chu, lightly waving his folding fan and feeling at home in the atmosphere of brotherly love. I've caused Ching Shang such trouble, making him worry. Then I suppose it's about time for Shidi to leave the mountains, said Yue Ching Yuan. Is there anything you need? The hand Shen Ching Chu was using to fan himself froze. Leave the mountains. Did the illness make you forget? Yue Ching Yuan asked, surprised. Didn't you tell me before to leave the matter of Shuanghu City to you? 
as a training opportunity for your disciples? So it was some troublesome project undertaken by the original flavor. But while Shen Ching Chu had been familiarizing himself with this body's spiritual power and techniques, they still weren't second nature. How could he take disciples down from the mountains for training? Just as he was about to summon his resolve and embarrass himself to renege and say that his body wasn't well after all, the system's <coughs> <coughs> unfeeling voice reverberated in his skull. Beginner level quest issued. Location, Shuanghu City. Quest, complete the training. Please click to accept. At the same time, the quest synopsis popped up before him with two options on the bottom, the left saying accept, the right saying reject. So this was a beginner level quest. Shen Ching Chu's gaze lingered on accept for a while. The option blinked green, a ding sounded, and the system said, quest successfully accepted. Please thoroughly read the provided files and make your preparations. We wish you a swift success. Shen Ching Chu came back to himself. Naturally, I remember, he said while smiling. It's just these days I've rested too much and grown slow. I had almost forgotten about this matter. I'll head out in a few days. Yue Ching Yuan nodded. If you're not completely recovered, there's no need to force yourself. There's no rush to train your disciples either. You especially don't need to personally take care of this matter. Shen Ching Chu agreed, still smiling, but he couldn't help giving Yu Ching Wan two extra glances. Cheng Men Shishiong, your current role. It's getting a bit too much like a quest giving NPC. Y yeah, agreed. All affairs on Qing Jing Peak, whether large or small, were handed to and looked after by Shen Ching Chu's trusted subordinate, Ming Fan. Shen Ching Chu had discovered that in matters that didn't involve a certain protagonist, Ming Fan was surprisingly efficient and intelligent. They were able to set out the following day. Before leaving Qingjing, Qingjing Peak, Lord. Shen Ching Chu briefly inspected his appearance. Teal robes, loose sash, sword at left hip, fan in right hand, elegant, cultured, reliable, graceful. A properly otherworldly being. In short, absolutely not OOC. Perfect. At the bottom of the long, hundred-step stone stairway, waiting by the mountain gates, was the carriage prepared for Shen Ching Chu, as well as a collection of horses for his accompanying disciples. Are you kidding? Shen Ching Chu muttered in his head. In the end, this is still a cultivation setting. Why aren't we flying on swords? Even in a magical setting like Harry Potter, not every wizard goes out riding brooms, the system coolly replied. It would be too conspicuous. You sure are knowledgeable, Shen Ching Chu muttered. Did you do business over at Harry Potter's before? The system typed out a giant line of hovering symbols. An ellipsis. In all these years of the system's operation, Shen Ching Chu might have been the first person bored enough to act so familiarly, familiarly, now I can't even pronounce English, with it, let alone to fuck around with it. On the other hand, if you thought about it, this setup made sense. This trip down the mountain was for the sake of training, and the majority of these disciples were young and lacked experience. They hadn't even claimed their personal swords yet. According to the traditions of Sang Chung Mountain Sect, only once a disciple's cultivation reached a certain stage could they go to Wanjian Peak, one of the twelve peaks, to pick a suitable blade. Though it was said that the person picked the sword, in truth, the sword also picked the person. If a person with subpar talent insisted on taking a top-class sword, capable of condensing spiritual energy collected from the heavens and earth, it would be the equivalent of a beautiful woman marrying an ugly man or arranging fresh flowers and cow dung. As you can imagine, the sword would be entirely unwilling. Luo Binga's real golden finger only activated when he came upon his own personal sword, the mystical Shin Mo. Shen Ching Chu entered the carriage. Its appearance wasn't especially ornate, but the interior was both spacious and comfortable, and a small incense burner faintly smoldered within. Once he sat, Shen Ching Chu had a sudden premonition that something wasn't quite, r quite right. He abruptly poked out his fan and raised it to lift the curtains. 
The second he looked outside, he felt he should have been struck blind by the sight. No wonder he'd thought that the silhouette hurrying back and forth around the carriage seemed familiar. The person everyone was ordering around to do miscellaneous tasks was none other than the great male lead, Luo Binga. Just then, Luo Binga hauled the last item onto the carriage, a white jade chessboard that was mandatory luggage on all of Shen Chen Chu's trips, though it usually went unused. He raised his head to see Shen Ching Chu observing him with a complicated expression and jolted slightly. Respectfully, he said, Shizun. He raised his head to see Shen Ching Chu observing him with a complicated expression and jolted slightly. You know, from the other end of that moment, it looks like a very, you know, BL moment to me. If, if, if we had gotten it from the protagonist's perspective, Luo Bing, uh, uh, he's just packing things and he looks over and Shang Ching Chu is observing him with a complicated expression to the point where Luo Bing, uh, jolts slightly. You know? Am I the only one seeing that? The injuries Luo Bing had received from Shen Ching Chu's pre-fever discipline were just about healed. The bruises on his face had vanished, and one could finally clearly see what he looked like. Even though he was young, his features still soft and immature, no degree of youth could conceal the handsome grace within him. On top of that, he walked and moved with a shining air. Who would ever guess that this was Ching Jing Peak's most miserable flower bud, which had been ravaged by wind and rain for many years? Although Luo Binga was doing the rough work of moving luggage and equipment, his attitude was meticulous. It was hard not to be moved by that earnest and focused bearing. It was especially hard for Shen Ching Chu, who already had some fondness for this male lead. He was, indeed, very fond of this ruthlessly decisive protagonist, who was so clear-cut with who deserved his kindness and who his hatred. After staring for a moment, Shen Ching Chu made an O oh sound, then pulled back his fan, dropping the curtains. From the other side? Yeah. It had to be said. The male lead was inescapably the male lead. Even with how downtrodden this kid was, with no history, no prospects, nor parents to love him, it was no wonder that there were still so many first, second, third, and fourth female leads ready to hang off his every word, trail in his wake, and otherwise throw themselves at him. Good looks were the true way of the world. This also explained why there was always some cannon fodder or another who found him an eyesore and who wanted to vent by beating him until his head looked like a pig's. Then something else occurred to Shen Ching Chu. That's not right. If the total number of if the total number of traveling disciples, including Luo Bing he, was ten, and there were only nine horses, then weren't they missing one? All right. Even if he'd thought with his toes, he'd have known who to blame. As expected, Ming Fun's gleeful voice cut through the snickering out <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, the snickering outside. Actually, we're short on horses, so we have no choice but to inconvenience Shidi this time. Although since Shidi's foundation is poor, it's perfect. You can also take this chance to train. Short on horses, my ass. In recent years, of all the major sects, Seng Chung Mountain's sect had become number one when it came to cultivation. It had no real business rivals. That it was overflowing with wealth could be left unsaid. In short, like they'd want for even a single horse. What? Ming Fun paused, truly well versed in digging his own cannon fodder grave. What sort of expression is that? You dissatisfied? I wouldn't dare said Luo Binga, Luo Binga evenly, neither haughty nor humble. At this point, a young girl's bell-like laugh cut the air. Ning 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 had arrived. Shi Xiong, what are you two talking about? Shen Ching Chu held his forehead. Really, young lady, your timing. 
Ming Yingying was a powerful catalyst in the continued worsening of Ming Fan's and Luo Bingha's relationship. Whenever she appeared, Luo Bingha was in for no shortage of, shortage of suffering, and Ming Fan was in for an equal amount of personal grave digging. Once again, Chen Ching Chiu tentatively lifted the carriage curtains a little, dithering over whether he should speak. As expected, he beheld Ning Ying Ying excitedly waving her hand. Aluo, not enough horses? Come ride with me! She really does bring a lot of hatred down on Luo Binga. So it is known. Although this type of plot, wherein the downtrodden protagonist receives special attention from a beauty, is a satisfying trope often seen on Zhangdian literature, it is also the likeliest to incite the envy of others and subsequent persecution. In this moment, if, Lu if hmm, Luo Binga, I don't know, I've been doing fine, if Luo Binga accepted Ning Ying Ying's suggestion, he could forget about getting any peace on this trip. Chen Ching Chu could no longer sit by and bear it. Ying Ying, don't make a fuss. Men and women mustn't be too intimate. No matter how close you are with your Shidi, there ought to be limits. Ming Fan, we're dawdling. Why haven't we set out yet? Ming Fun was overjoyed, no doubt thinking, Shizun and I are on the same page. He hastily urged the group to depart. Ning Ying Ying pouted, but said nothing. That little skit over for now, Shen Ching Chu let his mind wander from it and returned to silently reading the files spread out on his system desk. This trip wasn't to commemorate the first plot line to take him down the mountain. It was most important most importantly, concerned with a beginner-level quest that would determine whether he could unfreeze the OOC function. Shen Ching Chu couldn't afford to treat it with anything but the utmost seriousness. The file described the location, a small city several tens of kilometers away from Sengcheng Mountain Sect. Recently, a number of murders had occurred within it. Already, nine people were dead. Every victim shared a common fate. The skin on their body had been completely meticulously peeled off from head to toe and with perfect precision as if the skin had never been attached to the deceased body at all. I am flashing back to that one horror movie. What the hell was it called? I remember what it's called. Oh, but it's like... Major spoilers for that movie, so I can't say it. Crap. I hate to tease y'all like that. Where the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was enough to horrify anyone. Therefore, the murder had come to be known as the Skinner Demon. The Skinner Demon's chosen victims were all young, beautiful women. Therefore, in Shuanghu City, every family with daughters, wives, or concubines shut and locked their doors the moment night fell. Despite this, they had been unable to stop the Skinner Demon from coming and going as it pleased. A succession of nine horrible deaths, yet the officials had no idea what to do. The city's people were in a state of panic. There were even rumors that it was the work of a ghost. Otherwise, how could the culprit come and go without a trace? Several influential families had met together and at last decided to send someone to Sengcheng Mountain Sect to plead for assistance from the immortal cultivators. Chen Ching Chu had already read this information multiple times, but no matter how many times he read it, it wasn't the least bit helpful. The hell is a Skinner Demon? Never heard of it. Is this a newly added plot line or a hidden one? Is it dangerous? Is it strong? Am I even going to be able to deal with it? This isn't what we agreed to. In response to these questions, the system said, What isn't? You were once a novel reader. Novels are a type of artistic creation, and in any artistic creation, there are always decisions that must be made, and things that must be left out. Now that you've become part of this world, you naturally have to experience everything yourself, regardless of importance. You must follow every plot line to the very end, even ones omitted from the original work. Chen Ching Chu had no say in any of it. As such, he had diligently trained for numerous days, single-mindedly seeking to make his abilities second nature, lest he croak at the hands of some no-name monster before he ever had the chance to die beneath the male lead's feet, like a general passing away before his first victory. 
Luo Bingo was still outside, so at no moment did Chen Ching Chu dare to relax his vigil, keeping an eye out for any untoward activity. At the same time, he rummaged through the carriage interior. Every comfort one could imagine was on hand. Chen Ching Chu managed to dredge up five or six different tea sets, and he was speechless at the sight of them. No matter that in his past life he could have counted as a wealthy second gen, he still hadn't been this pointlessly indulgent in his pursuit of first world affluenza, okay? At this time, a wave of cackles rolled in from outside the carriage. He swept a glance outside. Here is a good place to stop. Torturous, but good. Ooh, we are in the middle. We are in the middle of page 56. And, aha. Bookmark. Wow. It is automatically impressive how she's able to juggle so many different and strange elements uh, going on in, like, fiction within fiction and the uh the system and just kind of everything they're being juggled like really well you don't get lost very much like at all um which is a feat in and of itself i love that like <laughs> this is where she started because it's not um a direct approach to storytelling at all uh, this makes me curious as to like this was the first work that she published online i would love to know and if anyone knows i'd love to hear the answer um i would love to know how much she had written before this right i'd love to know even though this was her first published book if she had how much writing she had done before she started even this because that's something that can be uh, overlooked in uh, uh, publishing and the writing world in general. Um, a lot of times, even if we know otherwise, a lot of times we look at someone's first published work and kind of default to like, that's the first thing that they wrote ever. But that is usually, that is almost always very far from the case. By the time an author gets published or starts publishing work on an online form, or what have you, um, as diligently as this, they usually already have some experience um, going from that. So I would love to know. Yeah, that's right, because she was in college when she wrote Morazushi, right? So yeah, she would have to be in high school. Um, uh, while she was writing this. So then I wonder when she started writing, period. Like, she started publishing this in high school. Uh, so I wonder if she's been, like, writing since she was 12? 10? Earlier? I started... I think the first time I ever wrote, like, anything, I think was probably around... 10 or 12 just like random unfocused bullshit was like 10 or 11 and then the first like book attempts not finished the first like book attempts started when I was like 12 or something so I can see her I could see her being that hmm um yeah we're we're three pages from the end of uh, the chapter, but I have a I have overhauled the way I do things and my filming schedule and everything. And uh, um, now, like, when it hits 5, I really do uh, have to go. And it's 5.01, so I actually need to hop. Um, I must go. An incredibly interesting first 50 pages, 50 pages plus... I love how she's balancing everything. I'm deeply curious to see how this beginner quest goes. And I am like, I am dying for the moment where he can go OOC. Right? I love that she already has that hook built in. Because 
I want to see when that happens. So we are back here on t Tuesday. We're back here on Wednesday and then again on Friday to uh, keep reading. Same time, same everything. I will see you then. I love you very, very much. Janae, I did not see that you were in here until just now. Hello. How are you? I love you. Um, I hope to see you on Wednesday. I hope to see everybody back on Wednesday. Please take care of yourselves. And I will see you then. Bye, guys.